So, more trouble tonight for Donald Trump. The former president's personal finances first came under the spotlight in the run-up to the 2016 election when he broke with decades of convention and refused to publish his tax returns. Well, now politicians at the U.S. Congress are poised to debate whether to publicly release a series of tax returns that they've finally managed to examine following a long legal battle that even went to the Supreme Court. Mr. Trump has been desperate to keep his personal finance, uh, financial details a closely guarded secret, but this could be unlocked by the Democratic-controlled House Ways and Means Committee when it meets later. Tax records would have been a useful metric for judging his success in business. The image of a savvy businessman was key to a political brand honed during his years as the star of The Apprentice television show. They also could reveal any financial obligations, including foreign debts, that could influence how he governed. But Americans have been largely in the dark about Mr. Trump's relationship with the IRS. Well, this follows a call last night by the House of Representatives Committee investigating the January the 6th attack on the Capitol for federal prosecutors to charge Donald Trump with obstruction and insurrection for his role in sparking the deadly riot. The Democratic-led Select Committee's request to the Justice Department is non-binding. Uh, it comes as a special counsel is overseeing two other federal probes of the former president. These relate to his attempt to overturn his 2020 election defeat and the removal of classified files from the White House. The panel asked the Justice Department to charge Mr. Trump with obstruction of an official proceeding of Congress, conspiracy to defraud the United States, making false statements and inciting, assisting or aiding an insurrection. The committee believes that more than sufficient evidence exists for a criminal referral of former President Trump for assisting or aiding and comforting those at the Capitol who engaged in a violent attack on the United States. The committee has developed significant evidence that President Trump intended to disrupt the peaceful transfer, transition of power under our Constitution. The President has an affirmative and primary constitutional duty to act to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. Nothing could be a greater betrayal of this duty than to assist in insurrection against the constitutional order. The complete factual basis for this referral is set forth in detail throughout our report. President Trump lit the flame. He poured gasoline on the fire and sat by in the White House dining room for hours watching the fire burn. And today, he still continues to, flan to fan those flames. That was his extreme dereliction of duty. For hours, he would not issue a public statement instructing his supporters to disperse and leave the Capitol, despite urgent pleas from his White House staff and dozens of others to do so. In addition to being unlawful as described in our report, this was an utter moral failure and a clear dereliction of duty. Evidence of this can be seen in the testimony of President Trump's own White House counsel and several other White House witnesses. No man who would behave that way at that moment in time can ever serve in any position of authority in our nation again. He is unfit for any office. Well, for more on all those stories, our eyes U.S. correspondent Eric Ham joins me now from Washington. Good to see you, Eric. Let's start with the trouble that uh, the new trouble, basically, that seems to be brewing for Mr. Trump, and that's the the possibility, or perhaps I should say probability, that the U.S. Congress uh, will release a series of tax returns um, that belong to him. What, what, what do you make of all of that? Yeah, Charles, and this comes after years of the committee attempting to try to get these, ta these tax documents from the president, and we know that they had gone to court over several years, and now those documents are in the hands of the House Ways and Means Committee. But here's the thing, Charles, 
Uh, Democrats are only in control of Congress, only in control of this committee for the next few weeks, and then Republicans will take control. We are now learning that today the committee will meet, and we're, it's unclear at this moment if the committee will actually release those tax documents. It's also important to note that they only have six years of tax documents from uh, from the White House, I'm sorry, from President Donald Trump. And we're told that perhaps they might release some of those tax returns or, and maybe not all of them. We also know that Republicans who are serving both on the committee are also trying to uh, trying to uh, to to get the the chairman of the committee, the Democrats, to not release these tax documents uh, uh, just as uh, they finish up all of their business and head away for uh, the, their the, the Christmas holiday. Uh, but what we're seeing now, Charles, is uh, this is just another blow to Donald Trump after, of course, the stinging defeats of the midterm elections and of course the criminal referrals, something unprecedented, something that has never happened in the history of the US government where Congress has made criminal referrals on a former US president. And now today uh, there's going to be this hearing uh, that will focus on Donald Trump's tax returns. And we know that he has sought to spend his entire life trying to shield and hide these tax returns from public view. And uh, Eric, you mentioned there that congressional committee recommending that the Justice Department bring criminal charges against the former president. I mean, is the outcome of that inquiry likely to actually result in any real prosecution attempt against the former president or is the bar for criminal charges for the department of justice very high i mean what's your assessment well charles we don't really know the answer to that question the justice department makes it a a, a policy not to uh, comment on ongoing cases and also as you mentioned the criminal referrals from congress to the justice department while they are non-binding, they do amplify the pressure on the Justice Department to at least bring charges or an indictment. That's not to say that they will, but the fact that Congress has spent more than 18 months investigating this, have met with more than 1,000 witnesses, and also will be providing the, the report uh, in very voluminous detail about what took place, and just to give you an idea, Charles, of the sense of how large this report is, the executive summary alone is 160 pages. So we know that there is ample information in this report that speaks to criminal wrongdoing, not just of the former president, Donald Trump, but of also of his acolytes and those who surrounded him. But again, what this does is it places more pressure on the Justice Department. It also amplifies the political nature of what we're seeing play out because again this is something that's coming from members of congress not an investigative body even though we know the justice department has already appointed a special counsel who is already looking into this and also we know that more than nearly 500 people have already been charged and convicted for their for their uh, for for their actions in that ongoing insurrection that took place but as we heard from one of the members of the committee yesterday, that it's now time for the Justice Department to go after the actual ringleaders as well as the organizers of that insurrection. And for the committee, they believe it stops at Donald Trump. In fact, we heard from the Senate Minority Leader, Republican Mitch McConnell yesterday, who said in a very short and terse statement that uh, we all know who is responsible for the insurrection on January 6th a huge, huge blow to Donald Trump, where you have someone so influential pointing the finger and publicly stating that it was, in fact, the former president. So, Eric, what is this going to mean politically and personally for Mr. Trump? I mean, is it going to continue to be damaging to him? And if people are expecting there to be some sort of legal mechanism to prevent Mr. Trump from running or force him to somehow drop out of the race, would that be wishful thinking? Well, that would be wishful thinking because we do know that there has been legislation that has been introduced that would actually bar Donald Trump from running for office. 
However, that legislation isn't going to go anywhere because Republicans will take control of the House of Representatives in a matter of two to three weeks. With that said, however, we do know that Donald Trump's legal uh, issues are growing uh, larger and larger, and that could pose potential problems for him as he continues to try to secure the nomination in 2024. We also know, Charles, from many of our sources that uh, Donald Trump is running because he has said that this is a, quote, shield to stave off any potential indictments against him. But we also know that the Republican Party is beginning to move on from Donald Trump. And of course, that is going to make it that much more difficult for him to be able to secure the nomination in 2024. Eric, thanks very much indeed. Eric Ham, a RISE US correspondent, talks to me that from Washington.